All right, Mr. Claxton's Algebra students, we're going to take a look at the distributive property here. We've been talking about the distributive property now for quite some time and how to use it to rewrite expressions. Remember, what the distributive property is, it is a property of algebra that we use to multiply a value by two add ends or two numbers being added together. I can multiply, for example, 5 times 17, wouldn't need that other parenthesis yet, 17 plus 5, you know, just the same as I can multiply 5 times the value 17 minus 5. Looking at this here, I know you would say, Mr. Claxton, why don't you use the order of operations? Why do not you just call this 5 times 22? And the reason why is because 5 times 22 is a little bit more difficult to think of. It's a little bit more difficult to think of than 5 times 17 and 5 times 5. Now, if I were doing 5 times 22, actually, I would probably revamp it a different way um, into 5 times 20. plus 2. And you can see there I started to write it out. That's the same as 5 times 20 plus 5 times 2. And that's all the distributive property allows us to do. It allows us to uh, multiply numbers mentally uh, better. Uh, we are going to deal with some problems that have variables here in a little bit. So the reason why this is a little bit easier to do, because if I look at 5 times 22, if I take 5 times 20, knowing that 5 times 2 is 10, and I know that I just have that extra 0 on there, so 5 times 20 is 100, I really should know that anyway, and 100 plus 10. So 5 times 22 is going to be 110. And understand, there was a difficult way. I chose uh, an easier way than 5 times 17. Um, plus 5 times 5. So understand you can have a difficult way and a hard way uh, to do that. We're taking a value, multiplying it across a quantity. Okay, so we're taking that 5, and a lot of math teachers, including myself, just use these arrows here to show you what you're going to be multiplying by. That is a trick or a shortcut that you can use instead of just trying to multiply 5 times 22 in your head the old-fashioned way which you would probably take 22, and then you'd multiply it times 5, and really you're doing the same thing. I hope you recognize 5 times 2 is 10. i got to carry the 1. i got to work from right to left instead of left to right like I read a book. 5 times 2 again is 10. Okay, add 1. I still get 110. So understand this is just a fancy way. We use the distributive property here. Um, we're using it to reinforce what you already know. So if I'm using the distributive property and mental computation to calculate each product, so 5 times 595, for example, well, I know that 595 is really close to 600. In fact, it's just 5 less. So in this case, we're going to take 5, and we're going to multiply it times 600 minus 5. Again, the quantity 600 minus 5 is the exact same value as 595. So in order to show that, just going to go ahead and uh, just draw it out here. 5 times 600. I'm multiplying 5 times 600. And I'm going to subtract that from 5 times 5. These smaller values are a lot easier to work with. I know what 5 times 6 is, Mr. Claxon. 5 times 6 is 30. And I know all I need to do from there is add two zeros, because that's how many zeros I do have left over. Um, on the 6. So 5 times 600 is 3,000 minus 5 times 5, which is 25. So understand, I do not need a calculator. I am smarter than a calculator. Um, and then to take 3,000 minus 25, well, I know if I subtract 25 from that, uh, I do not want to change the color scheme right now. Keep the current color scheme and don't show this message again. Don't bother me. I'm trying to make videos here. So I know I'm going to have 2,900. OK, 
Okay, and then 25 less, well, I know that 25 less than 100 is 75. 2,975 uh, is my answer for 5 times 595. A way to do that in your head. Another way to do um, some decimal values even. You see 4 times 28 and 5 tenths. It's the same as 4 times 30 multiplied by or subtract 4 multiplied by 1 and a half. So 4 times 30, well I know what 4 times 3 is, it's 12. Got that extra zero there as well that I have to account for. And then 4 times 1 and a half, well I know what 15 times 4 is, 15 times 4 would be 30. So 1 and a half, 1 1.5 times 4, is just going to be 3. I'm going to reduce that decimal place decimal place by one value. So 120 minus 3 is 117. Understand, you are smarter than a calculator. Down here we're going to use the distributive property to rewrite each expression. I would like you to consider this the reverse distributive property. It is the distributive property. I like to call it the reverse distributive property to set you up for factoring, which many people are scared of factoring. It is really nothing more than division uh, or the reverse distributive property. So right here, we have 8x plus 8y. I'm looking for a common factor between the two terms. I have two terms here. 8x and 8y are two terms. Can't add them together because they do not have like terms. I see that their common factor there is 8, because that's 8 times x and 8 times y. So I can divide by 8 and divide by 8, but again, I have to do something to counterbalance the fact that I divided by 8. I divided both of those by 8. You can't just go throughout this world randomly dividing things. Not allowed. I have to counter that, fa the fact that I divided both of those by 8 by multiplying that entire quantity times 8. When I do that, I'm left with an equivalent expression. I'm left with 8 multiplied by the quantity of, and then I'm going to go ahead and simplify those two terms that I divided by 8 earlier. And I'm going to simplify those two terms by saying, well, 8 divided by 8, I know that's 1. 8 over 8 is 1, and 1 times x is x. So 8x divided by 8 is nothing more than 1x. And I really don't need that 1 there. If you have to have it, then go ahead and put it in there. It's not going to change anything due to the identity property of multiplication. I'm going to add that to 8y divided by 8. That's really just 8 over 8 times y. 8 over 8 is 1, 1 times y is nothing more than, I'm going to go back to blue here, nothing more than y. So that's how I use the reverse distributive property to rewrite 8x plus 8y. Down here we're going to do a different problem. We're going to go ahead and do number 7. Right down here. Understand I'm looking for common factors. I'm given the 6a minus 9 b, and I'm looking for common factors there, common factors. So you should see a common factor between 6 and 9. You should, you should know that that is 3. So I know that I can take both of these terms and divide out a 3. It's called factoring out a 3, but we're going to stay away from that word for, for right now. We're just going to look for, uh, well, let's find the common factors, and once again, I must keep it in balance because I'm not dealing with an equation, I can't do the, it's not doing the same thing to both sides, I'm actually doing the opposite in order to maintain balance. We had that balance out the other day in class, and I was able to show you that. So I had to multiply by 3 to counteract the fact that I divided both of those by 3. And understand what this, what this is going to look like for a final answer. I'm going to have 3 multiplied by a quantity, and now I have to simplify those other two terms by taking 6a and dividing it by 3. Well, 
Right now, I'm just going to focus on the values. What is 6 divided by 3? 6 divided by 3 is 2. Thank you very much. So I know that's the same as 2 times a. And then minus, well, what is 9 over 3? 9 over 3 times b. 9 over 3 is nothing more than 3. B. So we're going to go ahead now and uh, stop the video to keep it nice and short and sweet. Um, I have used the distributive property to rewrite 6a minus 9b as 3 times the quantity 2a minus 3b. And understand, I cannot subtract those because they do not, the terms are not, uh, they do not have the same variable. So hopefully you're able to complete some of the problems tonight. Uh, if you do have any questions, bring them on Monday morning. Bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. Have a good weekend.